Words exhausted. Only deeds remain. Sanguinius keeps his poise, sword raised, hand extended, as implacable as the golden effigies that filled the endless hallways of his father's palace. His gaze is equally unwavering. He holds and returns his brother's stare. He does not blink, though to look into the eyes of Horus is to look into plunging chasms of night. There is nothing there. No pity. No hope. No mercy. Not even the hint of intellect. The tear on Horus's cheek seems an anomaly. But there is no evidence of the emotion that produced it. The Lupercal's eyes are fathomless black. The dead eyes of an apex predator rising silently from the ocean's depth, with jaws agape, or watching from savannah scrub about to pounce. The look alone transfixes, for like the mightiest carnivore hunters, the flat regard is as much a weapon as talons. What teeth do to flesh? These eyes due to the psyche. Sanguinius is not transfixed. Fear fills him to the top of the throat, enough to make him wretch. But he holds his pose to declare his defiance. It is a warning. Horus Lupercal does not heed it. His eyes remain dead, unblemished by the glint of sentience. He makes the first move, a single step forwards, as slow and ineluctable as tectonic drift. He lets the shaft of the great maul in his left hand slip down a little way, until he is gripping it by the ferule for maximum leverage. A second step. The infinite architecture of the Lupercal court shivers at the tread, and Sanguinius is no longer still. His legs flex as his great wings unfold, an act that takes less time than a blink. He is aloft, a golden blur that sweeps upwards, then down and across the black scaled mass of his monstrous brother. His sword's first strike tears across Lupercal's chest plating in a ripple of distorting shield energy. His second lashes Lupercal's left pauldron as he skims across it. His third rakes Lupercal's shoulder and back in a spray of sparks. Horus reacts. The maul rises and swings to swat his brother out of the air. The force of the swing is so great there is a soaring crack of air displacement. Despite its thunderclap, the maul finds nothing. Sanguinius has banked full circle, and then Carmine rips Lupercal's right hip, and then again, full force, into the breast guard. The talon of Horus rakes and snaps with enough force to crush the hull of a tank. The maul swings, bruising the air with the crimson trail of the blood light fizzing from its head. Neither connects. Sanguinius, wing scything, is inside his brother's guard again. Face to face, six meters off the deck, driving sword strokes into his chest and face. One, two, three. Each strike deflects from reactive power shielding. Each strike makes Lupercal's shield generators howl as they struggle to maintain protective integrity. Each strike causes the shimmering ghost of the defensive field to quiver and coruscate across his plastron and carapace. The talons of the lightning claw close again, the slam of a bear trap. Sanguinius is already gone, soaring vertically like a launching missile, 
high into the air above his brother. Under the arching ribs of the lofty ceiling, he turns, inverts, and dives. A descending eagle. Impact. In carmine strikes the raised shoulder plating that houses the suit's reactor. Sparks gout. More than sparks. Superheated specks of armor plate and hammer scale. There is a raw metal gouge left in the hunched back plate of the serpent scales. A mace head rips the air. Sanguinius is beneath it, rolling into an unloaded extension that carries him away parallel to the deck, less than two meters up. He banks around a column and sweeps back into strike range at an oblique angle, climbing slightly to eye level, then diving at the last to deliver a passing strike into Lupercal's left thigh. He loops hard behind his brother's back and lands a second blow to the reactor plating, driving in Carmine, two-handed. The Talon clashes at him. He evades, but does not pull back. They are face to face again for a millisecond. Enough time for Incarmine to slash the gorget and crackling face shielding. The mace descends. It strikes not brother but floor, crazing the deck like a bullet hole in a mirror, cracks spidering out from the molten point of impact. Horus Lupercal, despite his greater bulk, is not slow. His every step, movement, swing, and strike is bullet fast. The lethal blink of a las bolt, faster than any Astartesian reaction, faster than any Custodes reflex, faster than any Primarch. Except one. Sanguinius is making him seem ponderous, heavy, and cumbersome. Anguinius is so fleet, he is a golden ray of light, a darting glimmer. He is outmatched on almost every level, so he draws on what advantages he holds. Speed, agility, a peerless blade, a measurable courage, and above all else, flight. He forces the conflict into three dimensions using the air and the space, rejecting the constraints of flat plane combat. To stay on his feet, on the deck, and square off against his brother like two Astartes in a practice cage would be to invite a duel he cannot win. It is an eagle against a bear, a raven on a wolf, a ball dancer vaulting an auroch, lightning around a mountain. Dazzle in darkness. He is relentless, circling, swooping, climbing, stooping, coming at his brother from every angle to deliver a savage blow before rolling and banking out of death's reach. He wheels, feinting right to evade the talon, dragging the full length of Incarmine's edge across Horus's right pauldron with a grating squeal. Embers flutter. Broken scales rain onto the deck. Horus brings them all around in a cataclysmic swing that almost catches the beating wings as they pass him. Sanguinius darts away, then swoops back, suspending like a hummingbird for long enough to gouge his blade into Horus's waist, then veers away as the maul comes at him. The maul's head strikes the floor again. This time, with enough force to split and scatter the flagstones in a long fault line that exposes the underdeck spars. The tumbling slabs and buckling deck plates chase after Sanguinius like an opening crevasse. Sanguinius loops and lands, square and true on his feet, just beyond the end of the long fracture in the floor. He looks back at his brother along the line of broken, displaced, and jumbled flagstones, twenty meters away. He turns his left side towards Horus. He raises the blade in carmine in a proffer above his right shoulder. 
He extends his left hand, ready. He meets Horace's gaze, unblinking. Do you lack, brother? He says. <laughs>